And because he defeated the enemy, you and I can defeat the enemy. Right. And so I want to teach you today really quickly how to resist the devil. Number one, first of all, we resist the devil when we submit our life completely to God. Amen. When we give our life completely to God. James doesn't just tell us to resist the devil. No, no, There's right. something that we have to do before we actually will be able to right. resist him. This verse has a qualifier. Uh, so let's read the verse again. It's on the screen. It says, therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. And so if you don't want to do the first half of the verse, don't think you're going to have the ability to do the second half of the verse. The enemy will not flee from you if you are not submitted to God. However, if you are submitted to God, you have power and authority, and the enemy will have to run. Some people have said to me, well, Pastor, you know, it just seems like I can't win. I try to fight the enemy. I try to come and, and, I, and I try to, but it just seems like the enemy overpowers me. Let, let me ask you something. Are you fully submitted to the Lord? That's really the first question we have to ask. How many of you are serious that you want to overcome the wicked one? Amen? I am. And so I'm going to give you some diagnostic questions today. All right. Could it be that you are the one that's sitting on the throne of your life instead of the Lord Jesus? That would mean that you're not submitted to him, right? Are you calling the shots? Are you making all the decisions about of your life, you know, according to what you think is best? Let me give you some other key, key questions. Are you consulting the word of God and living your life according to this book? When you do that, you are submitting to God. How many of you believe that? I believe that today. Are you looking to God for spiritual guidance? Do you have a real prayer life where you not just where you don't just simply tell him all the different things that you want him to do for you, but where you listen to him and where you receive spiritual guidance from him? Amen. Maybe you haven't accepted Christ yet. If you haven't done that, then you haven't submitted your life to the Lord. Amen. The scripture tells us that we are not to give the enemy, Satan, any place in our life. In the video that we just saw, the woman who was very depressed had allowed the enemy to control her thoughts and penetrate her thoughts, and that allowed him access to her mind and to her heart. But the scripture tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, it says, don't give any place to the devil, nor give place to the devil. You say, well, how do you do that? How do you give a place to the devil? You do that when you nurse a grudge. What? Uh-huh. You give a place to the devil when you refuse to forgive. Am I right? right? You give a place to the devil if you continually participate in sinful activity. You're actually giving the enemy legal license to come into your life. And Jude tells us how greatly we need the Lord. How many of you know we need the Lord? Amen? Let me tell you something. On our own, we can't come against the spiritual forces that stand against us. But the good news is that with God, we can indeed resist him. Amen. The only reason why the enemy flees from us is because we are submitted to the Lord. Jude chapter 1 verse 9 says this. It says, yet Michael, the archangel in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Now, Michael was completely submitted to the Lord, right? He's an archangel of God. He was completely submitted to God. But Michael understood this powerful truth. He needed the Lord in his life in order to be able to come against the enemy. And that truth is, if it was true for Michael, the archangel, it's true right. for you and for me. Right. And so the first step in doing this is to completely give your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad for salvation today? Aren't you glad for the shed blood of Jesus? Jesus. Amen. We've got to come to him and humble ourselves. Admit our brokenness. We've got to admit that we haven't lived our life according to his plan. And we've got to become a born again believer, trusting in the work that Jesus did on Calvary. Understanding that he died, was buried, and on the third day rose again. And when we submit to God, what happens is that we become a member of the family. 
Is there anybody that's glad you're a member of the family? Come on. You're a member of the family of Almighty God. And let me tell you something. We're on the winning side. That's right. Amen. That's right. Submit yourself to God. Yeah. It's living for Jesus instead of living for ourselves. That's right. You may want to write down this next statement if you're taking notes. It's a powerful statement. Obedience is the foundation of living a life free of satanic influence. That's powerful today. None of us are perfect. I'm not talking about trying to live up you know, to all uh, the requirements of the law. But I am talking about surrendering ourselves and submitting ourselves to God. Walking in obedience to the very best of our ability. Come on. According to what his spirit has revealed for us to do. And according to what we have understood that the word of God is speaking to us. Amen. So James says to submit to God. Amen. How many of you say I'm, I just believe, amen, that if I submit to God, the enemy is going to flee, right? Yeah. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Yeah. 